Hey guys, what is going on? So I wanted to give a review of a new product that I got a couple months ago, which is a smart gym. And this is my only experience with a smart gym. So if some of these features on this product are, you know, similar across the board with other smart gyms, I do apologize, but this is my only experience with a product like this. Uh, the product that I'm talking about is the Speedience Gym Monster. It's diagonal to me right now. I'm in my home gym filming. Um, I have my squat rack and barbells, specialty barbells in front of me, Olympic plates, I got a bike to my left. So I have a lot of different uh, products here that I have wanted to get a lot of use out of. Um, and I am somebody who has had a gym membership throughout this process, but I find that the convenience of a home gym at certain times has been very beneficial. Now, the Speedience Gym Monster has really taken that to the next level because it is very similar to a standard cable pulley system. And that's something that I haven't really been able to replicate in my home gym. I do have a kind of cheaper one that, you know, just is plate loaded. It's not quite as good as a pulley system, whereas the Speedience Gym Monster, I think, is a very good version of that. Plus, it has other features on top of it. So before I start ranting about how much I like this, I don't have any codes. I'm not sponsored. I bought this with my own money, and I'm not trying to get you to buy this smart gym in particular. And in fact, I'm not trying to get you to buy anything. Um, I'm just talking about some of the features that this product has that I have been implementing into my own training, and I think they're game changers. Now, for me, I've had this product for two, three months at this point. And so obviously any gains that I've made on this are not really gonna be super crazy. And so I can't say, oh man, this transformed my physique. This is the greatest thing ever. These are just more so kind of first impressions. And as it stands right now with my training, I am not the most muscular that I've ever been. I took about a year off of training, or if I did train, it would be like, you know, a couple sets a week. It was very kind of relaxed. And so this product, both in terms of the features that it has, but as well as the convenience that it's given me, has given me my enthusiasm to get back into the gym. Because as opposed to going and driving to the gym, which funny enough, I've been doing again now that I've gotten back into the groove with this product, all I have to do is just turn this thing on, it's ready to go. I can do a variety of different movements on this. And I think that's really been one of the best aspects of this. Now, this does not take up a lot of room. It is extremely heavy, so bringing it downstairs was very brutal, especially I did that by myself, which I absolutely would not recommend. But once it's set up, it's a pretty, you know, small device overall and if it replaces an entire home gym like for example my squat rack here my barbells and everything like that the bench that i have takes up significantly more room and so i do definitely appreciate having this um my space is very crowded already and so adding this i really wanted to make sure that it was something that i could fit into my space um and it does fit now just barely but it does fit um and so what do i really like about this product so Largely, it is just a pulley system. A cable pulley system has both sides. Now, it doesn't have, if you wanted to do like cross body dumbbell, or excuse me, uh, cable flies, like it doesn't have that width to it because it's just not that big of a product, but it does have kind of a more narrow uh, pulley system that maybe you're familiar with. Now, I, in the past when I've used pulley systems, obviously they've been a little bit wider, and so that's something that it's not quite as good for. However, as somebody who does almost everything with one arm at a time, oftentimes I am able to get a really good workout in. I'm not looking for something that takes up more space, not looking for something that is wider. And so that's not an issue that I run into. However, if you're somebody who does like the cross body, uh, you know, whatever they're called, push downs, katana push downs or whatever, maybe this isn't quite wide enough for you. I would imagine if you did cross body flies, it would not be wide enough for you. But again, for somebody who uses single arm movements, which I really think is the holy grail in terms of isolation movements, it's not something that really bothers me. So that's one of the you know bigger drawbacks of it is just the size of it which is definitely a positive to it but the negative is that you're not able to potentially do some of those two arm movements that you may be accustomed to using now as somebody who has had gym access for you know my entire life basically when i am in a busier gym and i have to use two that are far away 
I always feel like I'm being very selfish with my space and using up two of the pulley systems at once. So I've never been one to use those type of movements anyway. Now, if you have a gym where that's not an issue, um, then, you know, by all means, but that's not something that I've ever grown accustomed to at any point in my training. So um, another drawback to this machine, I want to start out with some of the negative things first. Um, it's not something that's like bolted to the ground or anything like that. So if you use something where you are, you know, producing um, force kind of in this plane, it can actually rock the machine back and forth and that can cause it to malfunction, which is extremely annoying. So as somebody who is doing single arm, um, you know, cable flies, I found that the machine was constantly malfunctioning on me when I was doing this. Now, I don't think that's a software issue. I think it's just because again, this machine is not all that substantial in weight. And so if you're moving it and you're sliding the machine and it's constantly rocking back and forth, that's just something that, you know, mechanically is not going to work. And so now when I do my flies, I do them on a bench and a bench does come with the product. From what I have heard, I just got the regular flat bench, which is, you know, I have another bench right here that's way sturdier, but in terms of fitting it into a smaller space, the bench works fine. I've heard that the adjustable bench for the speedience is really bad and part you know possibly dangerous and so that's something that i decided not to buy personally and so i would not recommend that product um but the bench itself is just you know pretty standard it's definitely not a high quality bench but as somebody who already has a higher quality bench if i wanted to put that on the machine that would be something that i could do as well now that I've gotten to the point where I am using, you know, cable flies and using it on the bench, you know, I find that that's a very effective method. When I do a tricep exercise, I've had that same thing where the machine rocks back and forth. If I use a bench and I'm letting, you know, uh, the, the weights that I'm using on the pulley pull up vertically, it doesn't make the machine, you know, rock back and forth as if I was pushing this way. And so that's something that's definitely gonna limit the exercises that you can do. Now this probably depends on how much force you're putting into it, but as somebody who's a bigger, stronger guy, that's definitely something to consider. Now I'm sure you could find a way to, you know, bolt this into the ground or do something where it's mounted in some way where that's not happening. For me, just as I set it up initially, I haven't done anything with it since. That is the reality that I face. But for the exercise that I do use, it's totally fine. So any exercise where the pulley is kind of coming up, that's gonna be your best bet. Anything where you're pulling like this in this plane, probably not a good idea. So just to kind of limit some of the exercise that you may be able to do with this. Now, what does this machine have on it that makes it special? It has a few different modes and they, you know, really are what makes this product special and make it much better than a standard pulley system. So the first one is obviously just the standard weight. So you're using a standard pulley system and it, you know, goes up and down with the same weight and it's fighting gravity. And maybe the digital weight is something that you prefer. Maybe you prefer, you know, the standard pulley system. But the other modes, again, that's what really makes it shine. So you have the eccentric overload. And this is something that I like to use on my flies in particular, because I like to have more of a weighted stretch on a fly as the chest responds to a more uh, stretch focused lift. And I'm able to actually get more force on that downward portion of the lift. And then as I'm bringing my arm together, obviously that's not where I need the most force on a stretch bias lift. So for me, as somebody who absolutely loves my flies, something that I've been getting very into recently, um, that eccentric portion is very good. Now, I'm not really somebody who emphasizes the eccentric all that much, but I do think that that has a place. And as somebody who's done uh, a Caldeet style training program with much success, if you're not familiar, familiar with Cal Dietz, he basically breaks things up into three different phases, which is the eccentric phase, the isometric phase, and the concentric phase. And this machine is capable of doing all of those to a, you know, differing degrees, but in a somewhat effective method for each of them. So obviously for the eccentric phase, if you want to load the eccentric with something that you couldn't lift concentrically, that's what the eccentric part of this machine is for. That's something that I found to be very beneficial. When I first benched 405 a few years ago, I used that eccentric overloading for the chest. And now that I have a way to do that with my dumbbell flies, it is awesome. And I absolutely love that feature for that reason. Now, this is not something that I would use 
for every single body part. It depends on if it grows more so in that stretch position, if that eccentric is not going to be too damaging. However, when it is useful, it is very beneficial for growth. And so that's a great feature to have. The second feature, and this is what sold me on the product, and I didn't even think I'd use the other features, but the feature that is more similar to an isometric, an isometric contraction is the constant speed version. So you're definitely not doing an isometric, but the constant speed feature allows you to push as hard or pull as hard into the machine as you possibly can, and it'll only move it at a fixed rate. And what I found is I can actually exert more force using this feature than I can using the other features. And so this actually allows me to get more use case out of the machine than, is, than what is baked into it initially. And so one great way to use this, if you wanted to bias the length and portion of a bicep curl, is to get maximum force at a slow speed and have constant tension as you're curling the weight up. This lets you put maximum contraction into the machine in the stretch position, if that's something that you want to do. And for something like a, you know, a, a dumbbell curl, or in this instance, a cable uh, incline curl, that would be very beneficial in the stretch position. This is another way where let's say you are doing too much weight or it's something where you're not able to get the maximum force at any given point in the movement. This is allowing you to push as hard as you can at any point in the movement. And so what I was sold on was when I was using that feature or when I was hearing about that feature, that seemed to be something that would produce the most mechanical tension. Plus, when you finish that contraction, there is no eccentric portion of the lift, which is the most damaging. And again, you may want to overload the eccentric in some portions and in other portions, you may not want to have the eccentric load at all. And so I think that's a very beneficial feature to have. Now, I would like them to be able to implement a way where you can actually still have some eccentric loading on the way down. Maybe that's something that they get with a software update, but as of now, that's not something that I personally um, am too upset about, but I do think that should be an option if you want that. Now, the third feature, and this is something that I think has been very beneficial for my arm growth recently, has been the ability to use chains or bands with a cable machine. And so a lot of exercises, people want to focus on the stretch position, but that's not always the most beneficial depending on the movement, depending on the muscle group. And a lot of times with arm training, we actually want to bias the shortened position. Now this is not supposed to get into an argument of trying to say that the shortened position is better for muscle growth. This is just saying for certain movements, that's something that I am trying to target. And so I can put as much band tension as I want or as much chain tension as I want on this machine and overload that shortened position. So let's say you're doing bicep curls, you can get the most force at this top part of the movement. And they that may not be something that you wanna do depending on the movement. It really depends. It takes a lot of experimentation. It takes figuring out where you can apply the most force, but that has been very beneficial for me and I've seen a lot of progress doing that. And so that's the feature that I personally use the most. Um, the constant tension is the one that I use the second most. And then the eccentric overload, which I didn't think I would really even use. Um, I definitely have found that to be useful when it comes to chest training. And so those three features are something that I have not been able to replicate doing something else. Now, I have found that I have these devices that I have over here that allow me to load up a barbell. And then when I bring it down, they release. And so let's say I'm benching 300 pounds and I have 25 pounds on each side and I'm actually bringing it down and I have a 350 pound eccentric and then I drop it and then I can do the 300 pound rep. Now the problem with that is that's only one repetition. Whereas with this, you can use multiple repetitions and that feature only really works with certain barbell movements when it comes to using, I can't remember what they're called, but they are essentially things that drop at the bottom of the lift. And I've used those in the past and I have had success with them, but it's much harder to have an eccentric overload if you don't have a partner. And so doing this in a controlled environment with yourself is very beneficial. Now, obviously bands are something that you can throw on any lift. And I've tried to use products that I can use band tension on machines 
and it just doesn't really seem to have the same effect. It doesn't really seem to work very well. And it's something where I've just kind of abandoned the idea of using that. Now I've used bands in the past. It's great to use with a barbell, but if you're doing a machine movement, it can be very difficult to have the bands work in a way where you can actually get the resistance curve that you want. So I found that to be incredibly frustrating trying to use bands on machines. Now it's still possible. It's still something that can be done, but using it in the way where you can control the exact amount of band or chain tension on this speediness machine, I think that's really one of the best features that it has. And then the constant tension, I don't know anything that's like that. And again, this is how I was introduced to the product was the constant tension feature. I tend to slide it all the way down to the slowest possible way. So I'm just grinding for that rep the whole time. And that's probably the feature that I think is the most beneficial. So the other ones can somewhat be mimicked. And so if you do find those devices where it allows you to drop the weight at the bottom and then the you know concentric is lighter, or if you have gym partners, that's the way that you can do it. Or if you're trying to do band tension, you can even have a gym partner potentially push down so you get more of a, of a tension like that. But it's really much harder to get it exactly how you want it. And so that's why I think the Speedience is beneficial in that way. And then again, the constant tension thing, not something that I've ever found anywhere else outside of, I'm sure there are other smart gyms that have similar features to that. So hopefully that kind of summed up what I like about this product. Now, again, I've only been using it, you know, two to three months. I'm not really in a position where I've been um, weight training super consistently. However, this product has got me back into the gym and lifting again. And so even though I'm not at my peak in terms of overall size and strength, um, I do think that as I own this machine for longer and get more benefit out of it, I'm going to be able to accelerate my gains using those features. And so we'll see. I will revisit this review later down the line. But as of right now, I absolutely love the product, even though it does have some cons that I mentioned in this video. And um, just putting it out there for anybody who is not familiar with the product, I've only heard about this product from one person. And so if more people were talking about this, maybe this would fit the bill for certain people if they wanted to get a home gym and this would make life a lot easier for them. So just putting it out there again, I'm not trying to get you to buy it. I don't have a code or anything like that. I personally got mine from Amazon. It was cheaper to ship and therefore it was cheaper to purchase. I also have an Amazon uh, credit card, which allowed me to do 12 equal months, which was really cool. So that's the way that I personally did it. Um, I can link the uh, the Gym Monster in my description if you want to like check the price on Amazon as opposed to the website in general. But what I found is the shipping costs on the regular website make it significantly less affordable. It's still very pricey. If you think those features are worth the money, you know, obviously how much something is worth is relative to the individual. So I'm not going to say this is too expensive or it's worth it because that varies depending on the person. But just putting that out there um, of one of the seemingly few people who have tried this product, I really like it. And I think it has a place, a massive place in my training in the future, even with access to other gyms, even with, you know, barbells and everything like that at home. But if it was your one stop shop, I think it could hit, hit a lot of things that you otherwise wouldn't be able to do. So hopefully that can help you help some of you guys out. If you have any questions about the product, let me know. Um, but yeah, anyway, that's all I got to say about that. I'll keep you updated and I'll talk to you soon.